Today, we have Penny Pierce back with us. She is one of the early pioneers in the intuition development movement. She has worked with various institutes, training hospitals, CEOs, healthcare consultants, and other people in the development of visionary skills. She also works with the Arlington Institute, a group of futurists in Washington, D.C. She is the author of The Intuitive Way, Frequency, The Power of Personal Vibration, and Dream Dictionary for Dummies. She is with us today to discuss frequency changes and higher unified field reality. Stay tuned. You know, I think we've all been experiencing this acceleration process as we kind of head toward what I think is going to be a, a transformation in our realities, in the way we perceive reality, in the way we make up our realities, and who we see ourselves as, and all kinds of things. But um, that intensification is having a lot of effects on us in our bodies. Um, for instance, you know, it's making us more high-strung, more hyperactive, more irritable as the body increases its vibration and uh, we're learning to adjust to that new faster frequency, you know. Uh, and so there are lots of symptoms that go along with that, which I get a, a feeling that we're experiencing this in waves, you know. So some people who have been working on themselves for a long time are opening up into this in a conscious way and sometimes earlier than other people. And then as they get clear, then more people start to, you know, come online with all this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of um, affecting some of the early symptoms are still affecting a lot of people. You know, it's an ongoing process. Seems to be. So so some people are kind of at the beginning stages of maybe things that we talked about uh, last time, a, a year and a half ago, or maybe even further back, obviously, that uh, there's different, uh, how should we put it, upgrade uh, levels, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess so. Um, I think that there's a basic process that's still going on with a lot of people of um, as the higher frequency affects your body and, of course, your emotions and also your mind, and, and it's really the spiritual reality that's merging into the physical one. They're becoming, you know, more and more similar. But as that occurs, the low vibrational kinds of things can't exist anymore in that field of higher energy. And that means fear, basically. So yeah. that emotions that have been suppressed, negative ways of thinking, hatred, you know, all, all the taboos and, and scandals and things that no one ever wanted to look at that we're in denial about, all that stuff is coming to the surface now. <laughs> and becoming conscious. No doubt about that. Look around, you know, Penny. Wow. I know. Yeah. And in, in our own lives, of course, um, the surfacing is happening in our daily reality. It's the stuff of our lives. And in society, of course, it's the current events, and we're seeing it in the news. So a lot of this um, unconscious, subconscious stuff that we never had to look at before is now just floating around in space all around us. You know, it's everywhere. And yeah. there are reality TV shows about it all, <laughs> too, now, you know. So um, that causes us to go into a lot of stress and want to ex escape from it through fight or flight methods, you know, of either fortifying ourselves and, and trying to control reality or back away from it and avoid reality and, and get out of our bodies and, and um, you know, go up into space or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a good, uh, it feels like a good es escape. I mean, again, if we go back to, uh, if we look at it from two different perspectives, then Penny, one on the, on the larger scale of, of society and, 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 you know, global events, if you will, uh, and then later we could talk about the individual, but if we look at the world for now, uh, it's been a tremendous amount of, of social unrest, if you will, riots, uh, all the different places in, in Europe, the economy is going, sorry, excuse my French, down the toilet pretty much, and, yeah. and revolutions, uh, senseless violence on, on the streets. What's, what's, what's happening? What's going on? Well, I, I feel that um, as all of this fear empties out, and we have, to, we have a choice to make right now, which is, am I the, the soul or am I the ego? Am I, am I a fear-based person or a love-based person? And that's what's up for people. But as that fear dislodges, the ego comes up, and it resists dying. It doesn't want to let go. So I think we're seeing a huge process of ego death in individuals and in countries and internationally so that, you know, this comes out a lot with these, you know, the fall of various dictators now, the great, you know, controlling father figures, the corporate um, you know, domination of everything. That's ego in its greatest form. And I've said in, in one of the pieces that I wrote that, you know, this is about evolution. We are evolving very rapidly into our, our state of being spirit, our, our true state, which is that we are spiritual beings. And anything that stands in the way of that right now is too slow. So that anywhere in the world where there are log jams, where evolution cannot occur easily, we're going to have revolution. And I've been saying this for a couple of years that I was saying that we're going to have increasing amounts of, you know, revolution and rebellion and, you know, um, people just getting angry and, and fighting and more violence as the frustrations increase mm. so that the energy has to break through. It has to flow. And, of course, right now we're seeing with politics, you know, you know ego 
is always based on uh, right and wrong, conflict, good and bad, and you know mm. us and them, and it's always about opposition. So we're seeing, especially here in the United States, our political system is just deadlocked in you know hatred, basically, you know, and in order to break through that, you have to almost move to a third point above the opposition, you know, and yeah. eclipse the whole thing, right? And not play that game. It it doesn't work to take sides. Well, that's and, interesting uh, because I thought about that too when you mentioned the concept of, of you know questioning yourself am i the soul around am i the ego that it's almost like well in a way we are both right we need to transcend both of them we need to understand both of them and overcome both of them attaining to a, a third position between these two in a way mm -hmm. i don't i don't really see the soul as a, a position i think it's more like the unified field that contains everything but um i think that there are hmm, how would you say this about good and evil I'm not sure that that you can equate soul with good and, and ego with evil. No, and of course, I, I no, and that's, not, that. that's the point I kind of thing. That, yeah, sure. I think some people do. Yeah, and um, because ego, in its positive expression, is the individual self, and you know we need that to evolve. That's Absolutely. the whole point of coming into form is to become an individual point of consciousness, and then to evolve back out to the unified field, so that we know we're everything, and that all beings are contained inside of us. You know that we're we're the collective. You know we're both. Both and, not either or. Yeah. But yeah. Would, would you say, Penny, that uh, the governments around the world are, are getting this? Are they understanding this? I mean, this is uh, <laughs> steam is need, needs to be let out in certain places, and it seems to just uh, find the weakest, uh, you know, you know, place in, in the system, as it were, and, and that's where it's gushes through, if you will. Um, I don't, I don't know that politics can get it as it is it exists now because it's so polarized. It's based on a dualistic system, and I, but I think that cultures that encourage. Um, you know, diversity are much closer to being able to get at it, you know, because they're more open and fluid and flexible about not holding righteous positions, you know. And anywhere where there's all this, you know, tight adherence to righteousness of any kind, I, I kind of think that that gets in the way. You don't have to be righteous. You can just relax and fall into the universal laws and principles, and things work naturally. You know, it doesn't take such um, control. And, and it seems, uh, sorry to interrupt, Penny, but it seems to me then that the response from the government is the, in, in most regards anyway, the total opposite. They want to find, they want to have more structure, a more rigid sense of, of control. And if that's true, yeah. if they if they follow through on that, what do you see happening? What is the response from the universe or nature that they're well, Yeah, I can see this, you know, project, I can project ahead and kind of feel that this is going to happen because corporations control politics in, in a large sense, you know, through financial sure. uh, contributions, and they're not going to... You know, they're the great huge ego, and they're not going to, they don't want to die. Th that ego, that huge ego function in the world doesn't want to die, so it's going to fight. And we're going to see a uh, big clamp down on all kinds of things, which we're already seeing here in this country, you know, on the environment, on women's rights, on everything that, that progressively was done is trying to be undone now here. And um, it's it's that, that retreat back into um, the old, fearful way of thinking. So I think it's going to become exacerbated. I think it's going to increase and have its final death throes. And so a lot of people will get involved in that um, conflict, that fight. There will be other people, I think, who are more enlightened, who rise above it and, and basically don't participate in it in a way, but they just focus on innovation, on um, creating new forms that will advance the consciousness on the planet. So I'm seeing kind of like in innovation and new small businesses and entrepreneurial things coming up through the cracks. And the world is sort of bifurcating in a certain way, you know, or splitting apart into yeah. two realities. You know, and, and you can see this happening already, especially here in politics in the U.S. I, I feel like the two different parties and the two, the two groups that are behind these parties have such different mindsets that it's like we're living in different worlds. And they, you can't hear each other. No one understands what the other side is saying. Yeah. They each think they're right. They have facts to support their own <laughs> righteousness. <laughs> and, you know, so it's almost like um, there's going to be a widening of this gap of um, these separate realities. And these realities have different sets of rules. They work differently. So I think that, you know, if, if we take this forward, the reality that's based on fear is really based on contraction, separation, isolation, control, domination, and it cuts itself off from life eventually. You know, it doesn't allow the flow that is needed for uh, rejuvenation and resourcing. And eventually it will kill itself off in a certain way. 
through insanity, suicide, um, some forms of inadvertent self-destruction. I'm kind of waiting to see what's gonna, how it's going to play out. <laughs> oh, I'm not doubting a word you're saying. I think it's really uh, timely to, to discuss with you because I, I think everybody can see how the right wing of, of this and, and the left wing of this are, are seeking to absorb all of us into their you know world of, of problems and, and issue into their dichotomy just as you described and it seems like it is seeking more and more and more energy out of people and they will push any buttons they they can in order to get you involved in that game penny well you know you're right it's kind of like they're like energy vampires you know they're yeah. just looking for energy through usually through um you know sensational news and you know the constant generation of buzzwords and and you know, you listen to the news here, and there are these phrases that come out every week that must be generated by some copywriter <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> well, that, we know they, they exist. Uh, you're right, Penny. Of course, they sit there, the speech writers, and they come up with these words, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to see through it. I think that's the challenge. There are a couple challenges with it. First of all, to know what the process is that's going on under the surface, to know that the old linear separatist way of thinking, that cause and effect way that's based on slower vibration, um, is ending, and what's coming is something based on reality in the present moment, where things happen instantaneously, where things are interconnected in a unified field. It's almost magical. It's so amazing. And that as that speedier reality starts to take over, you know, it'll just seem antiquated to do things that old way. It'll, you know, what worked five years ago will seem really, really old. And uh, it, they, they just won't even function those ways, you know? So how do we... Uh, you know, not get suckered into this, if you will, Penny. What, what's your what's your trick? I mean, obviously, there will be it will be different things that are going to trigger different people depending on you know the the political background, their ideology, their philosophy over, overall. But it seems to if the system is geared towards kind of trying to get you engaged in it, how do we prevent ourselves from getting you know sucked into it? Do you think, Penny? That's right. Well, first thing is understand the process, know the symptoms, be able to identify it, and as an observer, right, so that you have a little bit of breathing room, so that you don't get sucked in right away. And then secondly. Um, develop a strong sense of what I call your home frequency, which is, you know, we have a choice right now. Like I said, I am, I am the soul or I am the ego. And if, you're, if you decide to be the soul, then you cannot participate anymore in fear-generating behaviors and thinking. And you start to compare. Sometimes I go through this exercise with the worst possible scenario projection and the best possible scenario. Right. Well, I, li I like that idea of looking at it, actually. Go ahead, Penny. You know, and then oscillating back and forth. Okay, here's the worst one. What does my body feel like? Okay, let's go to the best one. What does my body feel like? Okay, let's go back to the worst one. What does my body feel like? Let's go back to the best one. And when you rock like that, back and forth between the awful, contracted, negative reality and then a really great, open, flowing one, and then you have to go back to the bad one again, you go, ooh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and it's very evident to you that why would I ever want to choose to feel bad? I want to feel like I like to feel. It's my life. I don't want to waste it feeling, you know, awful. And that's the choice right now is how do you want to spend your time? Mm. So you make that choice and then you start practicing your preferred state or your home frequency. And you get into that by just remembering times when you did feel really great or you liked yourself or you enjoyed other people and you were in enjoying your creativity and the flow. There are a lot of ways I have in the book outlined to do that. But you've got to do it over and over and over again because the world is going to keep presenting us with challenges. People who are mad and irritated and, and you know, toss off, you know, negative um, comments and, and you know, road rage, <laughs> all these things. And we've got to, like, take a breath and get recentered and say, well, do I want to feel angry or do I just want to let that one go mm. and go back to the way I like to feel? So we have to be an observer of our own behavior as well, uh, obviously, yes. to understand this. Yes. Yes, and, and, and that means there are things that go along with that. It, it's like we're starting to feel like a need to um, clear away the things that are, that are cluttering our lives, and that might be actual objects and things and um, old clothes and whatever. It could be um, food. You know, sometimes when the, the anxiety part of the process builds and the, the vibration of the body starts suddenly pushing forward and wanting to rise up a, a lot in a fast way, we go into anxiety and then we either eat a lot or buy a lot of things at the store, you know, or do anything to distract ourselves and get into addictions or whatever. Mm. And, and those things then keep us from the actual act of adjusting to the higher frequency. They're in the way. But we have to get rid of that stuff. So I see a lot of people right now simplifying their lives, you know, and, and changing the way they eat, just lightening up a lot. And, and a lot of people may be feeling a need to do that. Anything that weighs you down yeah. or slows you down. Um, I've seen a lot of um, 
this, this whole act of kind of um, paying attention to the negative self-talk, like the things we say to ourselves or about ourselves to other people that are declarative statements about what we don't do, who we aren't, why we can't, you know, and the, the explanations about our lives that are all based on negativity and limitation. Mm. That those things, we have to have an ear for those right now. And every time you hear yourself doing one of those, just say, wait a minute, stop. Let me just say the opposite of that right now. What would that feel like? And I mean, literally, turn it around into a positive statement of something where instead of, I'm afraid of doing that, uh, I'd really enjoy doing that. What would that feel like if you said that? Hmm. You know, so to the, the negative self-talk actually blocks the flow of energy and the sense of your own self. That's a simple thing you can do all day long, and it really helps. Interesting. So everyone has the sort of responsibility to clear fear and return to the home frequency. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do any big work on it. Just don't engage with it, hmm. you know, and don't mm -hmm. feed it. Mm -hmm. And instead, feed the truth, feed the love, feed the soul as the reality, and, and spread that love into the space where the fear was, and the healing is done. So wherever we encounter it, that's our work now. You know what I mean? If you go all the way back to what's causing the acceleration, what I've heard is, and dreamed in my own dreams, is that there's some kind of cosmic event. It's like actually a, some sort of shifting of, of planetary bodies or flows of energy through, through a system. It, to me, in my dreams, it was like a bunch of gears that were all hooked up together, and there was a flow of energy that was running through these gears. And the, our solar system was one of the gears, and that a big, a big flood of energy was coming our way. I have no idea what causes this, but I do know that um, my friend John Peterson, who's with the Arlington Institute, which, which is a group of futurists, um, have, he's putting together these sort of um, channeled and intuitive visions of, this, of these causes, along with scientific research from NASA and finding correlations between the non-traditional and the traditional, which is starting to prove out some of this. But all I know is what I experience subjectively in my own self and in people around me and in clients uh, of the acceleration. Now, about leveling the playing field, um, I think that, I don't think there's a, some sort of like biblical plan to do all this. I think that it is a, simply a function of the level of energy, mm -hmm. that as the energy gets to different levels, reality actually functions differently at different frequency levels. And it seems real, you know, the way we've been used to reality functioning, for instance, cause and effect, mechanical processes that have to work a certain way, things have to take a certain amount of time. Uh, those things are, are a slower frequency reality. As we move into higher frequency realities, there is no sense of time. It's all in the present moment. It's all interrelated. Um, you know, everything knows about everything else. Everything's available. It's not controllable. It's all a function, actually, of attention. It, that's, and, that's interesting, Penny, because I want to bring this up even now. There's been... Um, there's different anomalies obviously happening around the world in different effects. There's different types of researchers that are tracking and, and detailing this, some of that we've talked about. But basically, to keep it short, there's scientific studies out there now that basically suggest that a kilogram is no longer a, a kilogram. A minute is no longer a minute. Things are changing. They're slowing up, you know, speeding up, speeding, slowing down, uh, et cetera. It's, it's very strange, everything. That's fascinating. I hadn't heard that, but that makes sense. It makes sense. Well, you know, our perception is changing, and perception creates reality. And you know, it's, it's just going to be so interesting where we, we really just start to accept the fact that things happen as soon as you think about them. You know, that you can materialize or dematerialize things with attention. And, and I, I think attention is going to be the big thing, the whole new use of perception or in, in creating and moving reality. Um, Anyway, that's yeah. a whole other well, <laughs> no, thing. It's fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm listening because I think it's, uh, uh, you know, again, I'm back to that idea that, that we, we hear so much of this coming from, from different uh, perspectives, and, and, and you're being an intuitive one is uh, just adding to, to the pile of evidence, uh, you know, in, in my own uh, looking at this, of course, as well. So it's, it's, very, it's very interesting hear, hearing about that. What, what do you think, Dennis, uh, if, if, we, if we look ahead a little bit, Penny, and, and how do you see this, this playing out? Uh, is it going to, obviously it's going to be easier for some perhaps and, and, and difficult for others, depending again on, on, on your perspective, how far you've, you've come in this process of both realizing and understanding this. But uh, generally, if, if we look ahead, what, what do you expect? I see a continued separation of realities, for one thing. As the old reality fades out, you know, it has to separate 
and um, you know, and almost die from starvation in a certain way. You know, the other reality will start growing and becoming more alive. You know, in other words, the new I call it the intuition age reality as opposed to the information age and the industrial age realities. But the in intuition age reality is going to become more and more um, the preferred one. So that bifurcation is going to happen. Um, the people who are still caught in the struggle of maintaining the old realities, um, I think, will exhaust themselves. There will be a major function of exhaustion in that, what would you call it, that, that sample of population or that, that amount of people on the earth who are doing that. Mm -hmm. But they, they cannot get rejuvenated. And maybe the symptoms of that would be you know, more and more illness, more um, suicide, more sense of, of hopelessness, and I can't handle it. It's too much for me. Um, you know, I just can't keep up. I, I don't know what to do next, and, and that sort of thing. Um, or um, possibly uh, groups of those beings will create sort of mass accidents or where a lot of people will die together in plane crashes, earthquakes, whatever. You, ha you have it, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think, will die. And wow, it's, in pretty, some it's way, pretty harsh, is it? isn't it? Well, not if you think of yourself as a spirit. <laughs> you know? right? It's just, um, you know, you're shifting out, then you get to regroup and come back in again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't see anything like this as a tragedy. I see it as a, uh, there is a, a something coming here that is so amazing, it's going to actually shift the reality on the planet to a much higher frequency and very fast. I think that's what everybody talks about with the shift. Mm. And I want to see if I can get some words around this because um, the early stages of it is this this separation of realities where it seems like the two realities are um, at odds with each other, but actually they're not. The new reality is not at odds with anything. It's it's the kind of higher unified field reality. The old reality is, is at odds with itself. You know, it's all ego fighting ego, taking positions and and struggling. Right. It's almost like that's that's a way for it to maintain itself as it's yes. kind of struggling to, to stay alive overall. The only thing it knows how to do right now is to kick and scream, if you will, to, to demand the <laughs> attention and the energy of, of whatever it can to, to stay alive a little bit longer. Yeah, drama and trauma. Just keep it going, you know, keep yeah. the fear going and, and try to keep, like you, like you said earlier, feeding off of other people's energy. If you can enlist them in the fear, you can get energy from them. That vampire. And look at all the popularity of vampires today. Oh, isn't absolutely. it interesting? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? And, and even you know, zombies are making a, a return now in different ways. Zombies as well. and the <laughs> superheroes. You know, it's yep, like yep. we're seeing it in, in, in symbolic form. Yep. It's very interesting to watch the media, I think. But anyway, so the, the separation of these two worlds. I think then that there is something coming that I have dreamed about. I think we may have talked about it in the last interview, but it's in my dream it was called the void. And it was an event where it was almost like time would stop. And in that moment where the time would stop, if you were still attached to the old kind of cause and effect reality and to your old ideas of ego and self, um, you would probably die or you would not be able to survive that experience. But if you had become transparent, literally having let go of ego, not having any fixed ideas about who we are and how life has to be, then it would be like, like a particle in a wave in physics. You would blink out and blink back in, and blink out and blink back in. But you wouldn't really know that any time had passed. It would just be another moment for you, and nothing would happen. But you'd blink back in, and the frequency of the planet would be hugely much higher. It would have moved into um, you know, an energy world. And so I think what happens there is that there actually is a separation of the planet into a, a more energetic planet and then a more physical planet. They're in the same space, in the same time, like parallel worlds. And the people who die will just reincarnate onto the planet that they know. There won't be any, any sense of deprivation or punishment or anything. Mm -hmm. Life goes on, and it's very compassionate. And those who come back without dying will be in a world where things are functioning much more, uh, with much more integrity around these new principles. And um, I'm not sure when that's happening, but I have heard, I just read a thing from, remember Ken Carey, who wrote the Starseed Trilogy? Mm -hmm. He says that there's, he calls it the nanosecond of non-time. And he had been getting the same thing in his, his transmissions. Um, it's not necessarily 2012. It may be further out than that. But I think that we all may be kind of preparing for this event without really even knowing. So it sounds pretty science fiction-y. 
Well, I mean, uh, Penny, let me just play devil's advocate advocate a little bit here and say then that, you know, th these are just, uh, you know, I don't know, nonsensical new age ideas as a, as a way to try to cope with the you know, reality that is undergoing tremendous change. What, what, would, you, what would you say to that? Um, I would say that that is a worldview that comes from the left brain that um, may be in the old reality that the whole idea of categorizing what's going on into new age versus what science yeah. uh, is, or religion or whatever, is the old left brain way of doing things. To let go of all of that is what we're talking about here, see. It's about not compartmentalizing it, but being in the moment with all you've got without forming it into something in your brain. It's just immersion into the process. And I think that's where we're headed. That's what the new reality is going to be based on, is that freedom and openness. And I prefer not to categorize it into, you know, labels like that, because I think that just is another thing we have to, you know, get past. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been intrigued by this you know, idea that we talked about, obviously, last time as well, Penny, the, uh, that we've moving in from, we're moving from a, an information age. We had the industrial age before, information age, and now you claim we're moving into the intuition age. And, and the, it comes from that argumentation point as well, I guess, the change or changes are now happening so fast that it's pretty much impossible for the the brain alone to 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 handle and to cope and keep up with these things, mapping them, understanding them, deconstruct them in order to to uh, you know feel I guess in one level safe about them to understand them, right? But but yeah. changes are happening so quick that it's it's virtually impossible to keep up with it. I think so. I think you know even if you look at the evolution of the brain itself, you know we had the reptile brain and then we got the midbrain and then we got the neocortex and each time. You know, we eclipsed the old reality. We didn't lose it. We still we still work with our reptile brain. We still use the midbrain for lots of things mm -hmm, and yeah. the neocortex. And now I think we're moving into the next layer, which is the entire body is the brain. The heart is the brain. The aura is the brain. The cells are the brain. It's it's like a quantum leap into a huge kind of holistic knowledge that is not contained in little brain tracks. You know, and um, it, when you give up having to know only in that linear way, like studious, um, intellectual, academic, or just intuitive either, you mm -hmm. know, you, you combine everything and then add more in on top of that, yep. and we're going to get the new way of knowing. And it's like we're going to have almost the feeling that the world is our body. The whole field is our body. You know, and there is no limitation. So it's going to be so exciting. <laughs> I, I think you have been in your book, yeah, the, the Intuitive Way. Uh, which is, I think, in the third uh, printing I edition right now, I believe. Yes, uh, yes. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, later on here as we wrap, in wrap things up with the first hour. But uh, in there, you talk a little bit about body knowledge, basically, the, an, an intelligence like a, 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 an instinct, if you will, in that sense, that the body has a certain set of, uh, of ways of interpreting reality, reading the signals, as far as I understand it anyway. And, and this is something we need to get accustomed to as well. Yes, and I think that, that that's the old reptile brain way of knowing. It's about attraction and repulsion. It's um, a kind of binary system where uh, you expand or contract, and you know, yes, I want this, no, this isn't right for me. And so that's the, the basis of body knowing in a certain way. But now, um, in frequency, I talk about ultra-sensitivity, which, because the vibration of the body is going up so much, it's actually becoming a receiver or the new, you know, um, non-localized brain, where it's able to pick up on information that's coming through waves about events, about the future, about other time periods, about places that you're, you know, you're standing on and what happened there in the past, coming directly through the field into the body, and the body starting to, in its ability to be subtle, to, to understand subtle information, for us to discriminate this kind of data from energy itself. And that's the gift of the body now, I think, is that it's this amazing, amazing vehicle for knowing. Wow, that's it's not just a thing, <laughs> you know. That's right. That, that's interesting, Penny, because th what that means, obviously, if we have a, a different uh, relationship to what you call the field, the connectivity to that, or the uh, communication, what have you, with that, uh, it might be pretty easy if we're unfamiliar with that to maybe mistake our own um, sense of things, or even our, you know, what I'm saying is that if we're in an area, then let's say that has uh, experienced something traumatic in the past, that might be something that actually all of a sudden is overwhelming us, and we might think that it's us generating this, or that's something within us our, ourselves creating another level of fear, right? Yes, and that is the old way of thinking based on separation because you feel you're separate from the place or we feel we're separate from the place, for instance, but actually in the new way, we are the place also. 
or the place is inside of us and part of us. So if the fear was there from the past, it is our fear that we have to disengage with, clear, and heal. It doesn't matter where it started. It is ours if we notice it. You see? So everyone has the sort of responsibility to clear fear and return to the home frequency. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do any big work on it. Just don't engage with it. Hmm. You know, and don't mm -hmm. feed it. Mm -hmm. And instead, feed the truth. Feed the love. Feed the soul as the reality. And, and spread that love into the space where the fear was. And the healing is done. So wherever we encounter it, that's our work now. You know what I mean? So everyone has the sort of responsibility to clear fear and return to the home frequency. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do any big work on it. Just don't engage with it. Hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. don't feed it. Mm -hmm. And instead, feed the truth, feed the love, feed the soul as the reality, and, and spread that love into the space where the fear was, and the healing is done. So wherever we encounter it, that's our work now. You know what I mean? Wow, that, isn't, that, isn't that a lot of uh, clearing to do? If we, I mean, how, how far back in, in, in time do you think that this the stretches the, the, the knowledge or the awareness of, of uh, different things that happened on, on different places on, on, on mm -hmm. the Earth? I mean, we had a lot of, lot of wars, a lot of bloodshed and, yeah. and, and trauma on this planet, uh, Penny. Yeah, especially in certain places, and those places need a lot of love. But also, it's kind of like an octave in music, I think. It's like um, these things are connected through time in a, in a resonance, connected by waves. If you strike the tone, a higher tone, on any place on that wave, it's going to go through the whole thing. You know, and in each present moment, everything's interconnected. So it's not like there's a linear process that's going to take forever because it's so vast. In one moment, you know, in the stillness, in the place where the physical plane meets with the zero point or still point, right in that moment, you can have one thought there and it conveys itself to everything, everyone, everywhere, mm -hmm. all through time. Mm -hmm it's actually fairly easy to send blessings or to just love things from that one point. Do you know what I mean? It's like, sure. have you ever done that in meditation where you drop down into your body and you go down, down, down to the point where it's almost like where the, the particle turns into the wave at the center of an electron or something, you know? Yeah. And it's yeah. so quiet there. That's that, that amazing point, uh, magical point. And when you go in there, you can, you can, telepathically communicate and do all kinds of things interesting very 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 interesting listening you know hearing about this what, what do you make of um it's, it's a, maybe a silly question but but timeline then benny is this something that uh, uh is going to play out over a long period of time or or are we looking at the scenario that uh, time is is becoming more and more uh, well obviously relative but also maybe um uh, not as important anymore in that sense linear time i mean yes yeah i think everything's convening um, into kind of rapidly like something going down a, a, a vortex to a, a point in the middle. Um, my timeline, I mean, I think from this year especially has been a huge acceleration over last year. I think that'll continue and there'll be huge changes in 2012, but I'm getting more like 2020 that there's something. So I don't think it's any further out than, you know, eight years or something, eight or nine years. But, um, and I, I think too that the, whatever this event is or this transformation that people might go through, it may not happen all at once all over the planet at the same time. It may be welcomed into people's personal realities in different manners and in, in different amounts at different times in different stages so that it is um, relative to each person. But it's happening everywhere like, like a kind of rain falling all over the planet. Um, that, that would be a bottleneck otherwise. I, I don't see anything happening. <laughs> you know. Explosion. Yeah, well, exactly. That would be. I, I mean, nothing ever before, as far as I know, has happened at once at every pla place at the same time. You know, it has been. It's, it's a slow, gradual uh, process, and, and therefore, also, I've also heard a lot of people who are who seem to be to be willing to to jump the, the transformation or the the shift that, you, as you mentioned, is basically. You know, as, as I hear it, it's it's to me, from my perspective, it seems a little bit too enthusiastic. If you know what I mean, I, I think that we might be looking at a scenario where things are actually a tad bit more slower in terms of the implementation than, than maybe just, oh, by next year, you know, 2012 will happen, you know? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. What, what do you think, uh, Penny? I think that you're right, and that, there, that a lot of the, the hype around 2012 is based on the old way of thinking again. It's, it's that drama, trauma, um, uh, polarization energy of um, getting some benefit from adrenaline and, uh, <clears throat> and not really understanding the calmness of spirit the pervasiveness of it and how 
almost like kind of sneak up on you, you know, <laughs> it can just come in during the night while you're asleep and yeah. um, come right in and, and change you. I, I've noticed this year, for instance, that in spite of the intensity of the energy, which has this, the first four months of 2011 felt to me like almost paralyzing in a way where I could not seem to use my left brain. I, I, any work that had to use that kind of intense um, analytical, structural, mental work, I couldn't focus on. And instead, I wanted to either take a nap, watch a video, and I realized I, was just, I wasn't being lazy. I was just trying to get my left brain out of the way so that the energy could integrate. <laughs> and it took four months. Mm-hmm. And then right around the beginning of May, I felt things shift and release, and things have been moving very fast, like a, a river being undammed um, from that point on, at least in my experience. Um, and there's been a kind of a, I want to say a soft urgency, nothing really dramatic, but a sense that um, I want to clear things that are in the way. I'm ready. I, I don't want anything else slowing things down. I don't have a lot of ambition. I don't have any idea what my future is going to look like, mm-hmm, yeah. and I actually don't really care. And I want purity, you know, in my experience. So it's it's a funny experience because it's not ambitious, but it's relentless. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there are lots of I think old traumas that are clearing in a way where they're not coming up as big emotional chaotic experiences. They're just quietly dissolving and maybe in dreams and, and other things, but they're, things are moving that weren't moving before. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to ask you, Penny, what you see happening with things like um, e- economy on, on this level. Things are, seem, seem to be falling apart. Do you, are you positive? Do you think that uh, mankind will, will, will come up with a, a new system of, of, of means of transaction, or do you see it just continuing the way it is and just more debt being built up, or where do you see that going? Boy, that's a huge thing, I, because it feels like there may be something where the best of all governmental systems have to come together and and merge and make a new stew. You know that um, that the way we make money or the way profit figures in our lives is is going to feel antiquated as well. I think there there'll probably be more things like you know like freeware on the computer where you know give it away for free and then let other things come in as a result of that mm. let yourself be fed by the world by giving to the world let yourself share let yourself co-create with others and so i think there'll be a lot of international more cooperation between cultures and nations to co-create things that that one culture wouldn't have the whole answer that i just keep saying innovation 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 and lots of creativity and um, a, a rapid increase in amazing ideas coming in, and often from children, you know, young, young people coming up with a lot of this stuff, and in groups. I really think that within the next five years, we're going to find a solution to energy problems. Right, um, I was just going to bring that up. Cancer. I mean, something has to give there, uh, in terms of energy, it feels like. Mm-hmm. New inventions or something. Yes, yes. And, I, I, you know, the energy and poverty and... The food and water shortages, I think, will, will be a big problem coming soon. That means people are going to have to share. They're going to have to, for instance, repurpose certain corporate um, functions. Like I've often thought that companies like Coca-Cola might be in the business of moving water around the world uh, <laughs> when it's needed. You know, yeah, something yeah. like that. Transportation, shipping, those kinds of things of moving food and water around the planet are going to, you know, be, you know, strong. Um, and new new methods of farming and and going back to you know that whole thing of collecting heirloom seeds and and the old plants that survive the heat and um, you know I just think there's going to be a lot of um, reinvention of some of the good things from the past, but also bringing in just amazing new things. Yeah, so. that's that's very interesting. I think you're you're right on that. I think we again we have to use utilize what, what we have done in the past, which is that is good. You know that is. Uh, uh, sound and methods we, we we rely on, if you will, and, and then also advance forward from that. And I, I definitely want to ask you more about this here as we proceed. In. Everyone has the sort of responsibility to clear fear and return to the home frequency. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do any big work on it. Just don't engage with it, hmm. you know, and don't mm-hmm. feed it. Mm-hmm. And instead, feed the truth, feed the love, feed the soul as the reality. And and spread that love into the space where the fear was, and the healing is done. So wherever we encounter it, that's our work now. You know what I mean? 